So we have four big ideas on here, and uh, again, open to feedback on this draft about what you would like to see done as it relates to uh, superintendent goals for this year. So where do these four big ideas come from? The answer to that is, so I started July 1st, and I have met with just about anybody that's willing to meet with me and still have lots of other folks that I'm going to meet with, I'm sure. So we're talking uh, community, uh, community members, business leaders, uh, teachers, uh, our executive council member. I mean, so essentially, well, hi, I'm Brad. Uh, what would you want me to know about the district? I mean, it's that sort of a conversation. And really, um, so what has emerged sort of based on all those things um, and in conversation with uh, you as individual board members, uh, there seem to be sort of four big ideas that are emerging. Um, and what I would want to stress is there are other um, goals that are still in play that we're still very much worried about. And so I'll, I'll tie hopefully one of those together in this first example. So uh, we have this important idea on a promise of excellence for all. That's what we're trying to deliver on for all of our kids. And what I would say, and you've heard me say it many times uh, because I believe it to be true, um, the district and leadership in the district, guided by the board and facilitated at the building level, we have chosen a significant amount of high quality work that uh, uh, when optimized will lead to improved outcomes for our kids. So we are doing important uh, continuous improvement work. We're doing that in PLC formats. Uh, we have, um, our uh, observation co-plan work, we have our equity work. So we have a number of pieces of the puzzle that really have chosen uh, lots of great and important work uh, uh, in which to invest. At the same time, one of the things I hear is, um, so what does that actually look like put together in a way that's sort of consumable? So right now at times it feels like it's some um, big conceptual ideas sort of um, in pieces, but what, what would it look like to sort of put it on a page so it's more uh, consumable and, um, um, and that's oftentimes done through a theory of action. So what you see here is, um, it's in there, there's significant work underway and I've, and I've highlighted some of those things. So the idea is to designate a representative leadership group uh, to begin this work, certified and classified staff, parents, community members, students. And uh, as we've sort of kind of kicked this idea around sort of at a global view with the cabinet, uh, we're thinking a large group of people, 50, 75 people, a really truly collaborative group, and just sort of steep them in the work that's underway. And then if you were to say, so what are the big ideas? What are the big buckets that we think if we did this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing, it would deliver on the promise of excellence for all? And so oftentimes you do these types of activities, having done a, a little bit of this work before in life, it's oftentimes things like uh, a highly skilled and diverse staff, uh, that receives frequent uh, professional learning opportunities that are expected to apply to their circumstance. That's usually sort of a bucket around because we honor that the people matter in an organization. Another bucket in schools is oftentimes things like alignment of curriculum instruction and assessment uh, with the infusion of equity and other important conceptual ideas. So I don't know what those things will necessarily be, but we'll pull that group together. Um, then we'll design a process to communicate, sort of they'll come up with a draft of what this theory of action looks like to deliver on the promise of excellence for all. And then we'll try to set up a process that communicates those ideas to the buildings, to each of our buildings, uh, usually through like BLT. So we'll send that to them, have them provide feedback on, does this look like sort of the right thing? Is it calibrated correctly? We'll send that back to the larger group and see if we can come up with a draft theory of action. Um, by the May board meeting. So uh, we'll bring that to the board and we'll calibrate against sort of your thinking, is this really um, what we're intending to do? And the BLT, just to make sure oh, that we're sorry, all on the same you. page, yeah. yep. So our building level team, so each of our schools have uh, building level teams and they have school improvement work underway and so we'll send that back to them and say, can you find yourself in this narrative? Because one of the most important parts of a theory of action is every person that's impacted by that theory of action whether you're a teacher, nutrition worker, custodian, parent, student, you need to be able to see yourself in this story. So where do I fit? And how does this whole thing when put together lead to uh, excellence for all? So that's sort of the big conceptual idea there. So what we don't lose, so one of the board's goals is uh, closing the achievement gap or the opportunity gap. That still remains a goal. And so what we'll do is we'll nest that into this work because I mean it's heart excellence for all is closing the opportunity gap for every child and so uh, we also have a goal around 
a more diverse workforce. So we're taking action, and we have taken action around that. Um, the needle has moved on that, um, and not as quickly as we'd like, but about from about 3% to about 6% over the last few years. So uh, progress, but uh, we, of course, would like to accelerate that rate. So we, we won't lose that. It'll just get nested probably behind something around uh, a highly qualified and diverse staff, if I'm guessing. Can we so, ask questions? Yeah, so that's so I'm going to pause. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <gasps> now. Thanks, Mary. Um, so I know the BLTs, the building lo level, building level, I'm sorry, leadership teams are already, <coughs> oh, they're leadership they're already teams. in Thank place. You. Yep. Um, for this larger representative leadership group, how is what? how do you pick people to be in that? And then how does that compare or contrast with the School Improvement Advisory Committee? Yeah, so I think that's a conversation we could have tonight. I'd be interested in that coaching feedback. So we have we have some important already identified board appointed groups. Um, School Improvement Advisory Committee, honestly, to me, would be a good sort of backbone group from which to begin. But I don't know that it's as diverse in its representation as sort of as being described here. I don't, there aren't students on that, are there? No. Trace, or are there? So, so if we wanted to go to school improvement route, advisory committee route, which I think would be a good way to think about it because they've already been steeped in some of these sort of schooly conversations. Didn't want to get too technical there, right? Yeah. And, um, uh, but then if the board would, so that's a board appointed committee. So if the board would understand that we would probably send an invitation out to make it even more inclusive and a little bit larger, um, I think that'd be a group, a good one from which to begin. Or we could just do invitations to a broad spectrum of people and start a new committee. Um, but given the timelines, that's, I don't know. I agree. And maybe you start with the School Improvement Advisory Committee membership and build from there. What I've experienced, though, and that's a large group, 70, 50, 60? And so I've been a part of that, and I see that attendance is a big issue. So I think we have to make sure that there's some kind of covenant that whoever's going to participate, they actually attend and participate on a regular basis and not on a hit or miss basis. Um, a lot of the people on the SIAC committee are just extremely busy and hard to, to nail down. So I just want to plant that seed in your head. To Good. Good. Uh, other feedback or Gary. comments? I'm Gary? Um, on this first one, um, maybe a question, it's more maybe a comment. You know, if you're looking, and it's kind of scary if you're going out to a group, a large group, and asking them where do you think you should go. And I would caution that um, uh, sometimes leadership uh, in a variety of different organizations and whatever uh, gives information and the idea is to lead them to where they already have a predetermined, uh, if you get my drift, of, of where you're going. And so it's kind of scary to go out and what happens if, oh, they don't, they're not going in the direction you think. And uh, I would just say uh, one of the comments that I hear many times is, well, they've asked me to be on a committee, they asked me to do this, but it was just a token. And they already had the plan they already knew where they were wanting to go they just wanted us to rubber stamp and so I just caution the fact that if you really want people to be engaged they have to feel truly ownership to it feel that they are that they do have um, uh, an input that's valued and and Great. result yeah agree any other comment yeah Mary I like it I, I really like what you're you're doing here so thank like you I like the fact that you're engaging the students as well. Um, I think that that's an important voice that we don't always get in this conversation. And, and I think, as is evidenced by the conversation tonight, hearing from the students is really a nice benefit. Well, I think it's also important, too, to include the community, because mm -hmm. that's, that's really key in the process, too. OK. Okay, with the next one. Uh, so one of the other things that emerged, and um, I'm not exactly sure how to say this. So one of the things that emerged is, uh, so some of the uh, most important ambassadors, so the opening sentence there, I absolutely believe, our district's an excellent place in which to learn and to work. Um, so one of the conversations I've been around many, many, many times is uh, staff are our, our best ambassadors about the district because they know lots of people and they interact and are around folks. And so it's sort of a variety of sentiment around 
um, I don't know how to say it, how much uh, pride there is in the organization. And so uh, for th this, for me, is, and I've, they've, this whole group's heard me say this, and so they're like, this guy's campy, but it's okay. Um, I've sort of thought of this as a lanyard project, and the reason I think of it as a lanyard project is this, um, and many have heard me say this example, but I, I would want to say it again. When I, when I put on this lanyard every day, I couldn't be more proud to put on this lanyard every day. And when somebody stops me at a gas station or somewhere else, and they point to my badge and they say, hey, where do you work? I love to hold this up and go, I work for Cedar Rapids Schools, and can I tell you a great story about something that recently happened in Cedar Rapids Schools, <laughs> right? Which I think they think, oh my gosh, I came to get, <laughs> I came to get coffee, right? I mean, like, so, um, so the, to the extent that we can uh, really help provide an opportunity for staff to, to talk about what Cedar Rapids Pride with me and this Lanyard project and to just help tell a great story. And that doesn't mean we don't have warts. So I don't wanna, uh, I've said this in other groups, I, I'm not trying to sell sunshine here that this is a completely perfect place, uh, but it is a pretty great place. And um, so to the extent that we could do some work around Cedar Rapids Pride or, or the wellness of our organization, I think, that's the intent here, and it'll be sort of a similar uh, type of format. The other thing I heard a lot about and continue to is just opportunities for improved communication. And I think improved communication is somehow nested under this sort of larger idea about what are we really trying to communicate about our, our district. And um, so we've actually already started that work. We've, uh, we're pulling some internal stakeholders and some external stakeholders, and Grant Wood is, is uh, helping facilitate that. Um, we're gonna put a, a, a survey out to all staff, I think it's November 12th, um, to get some feedback about the types of communication that would be most important uh, to staff and for staff. So we're trying to, I think, lay the groundwork on the communication side and get some feedback around that, uh, and then on to a larger conversation about um, this pride in our district. So, um, so you can kind of see the process there. Any comments or questions? or? Uh, I think it's a great project, um, but you know I just will warn that it's one of those. It's one of those telling the whole world here. Um, it's one of those two that you can't. Uh, they have to feel it. It it has to be. It has to come internally, um, and I think as you work through that, you'll find. So how do we build that? And it isn't just telling them just reminding, but they have to feel it internally. And I, as we see every board meeting, as we see some of our students and staff, um, um, we have a great district and we're doing great work. And regardless of what the naysayers say, and we keep, uh, it's tough being a teacher because it seems like you can't get away from somebody saying, oh, you're not doing a good job from the media and from press and so on. We are doing a great job. And so I think the more we can do, I think it's a great goal, the more we can do to, to help point out those factors and get people to believe in themselves and what we're doing. It's, a, it's, it's nothing but uh, a, a very good thing to do. Other comments? Yeah, Kristen. I like the partnership of the two themes from these two, CR Pride and Excellence for All. I think they feed into each other very well. They're very complementary. And um, finding a way to build on that because of what we're doing to create excellence for all and create that pride for the, for the staff and everyone and for the environment and the community. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how these two things play out. Sort of, yeah. they're, they're sort of like parallel work, but it may not end up being, I, I don't know. I, yeah, to I, Gary's I, point, I honestly don't, I don't know. I don't know either, thing. but yeah, I, like, yeah. I like that they are complementary parallel paths. Um, and and working toward the same overall. I think um, that the first goal will certainly help mm -hmm. the second goal in the fact that staff and stakeholders in the district will have a much more clear idea of how the big rocks, the big ideas, the big buckets or whatever are all working together. So we have these great things going on, as you've said, that are, you know, they're research-based, they're best practices, they're making a difference in and of themselves, but together they could even be more powerful. So just helping everybody see what that power could be, um, I think will definitely help with 
just everybody feeling on board and prideful of, of what the work they're doing. So, any other comments? So then the second part of that is that communication information I just gave you, and you see that at the top there. And so that's the quick overview of that. Then the last two on here are uh, finances and facilities. And so this came directly as sort of two big ideas from um, board kind of a conversation at this table and other places. So um, based on where this conversation goes with the legislature and state supplemental aid, uh, we need to start thinking about what are our current finances. So I think, and I maybe have this wrong, we're going to do a board work session. I think it's the second meeting in January about finances because at that point we'll know um, where the governor sort of, you know, puts out his first idea about what's going to happen with state supplemental aid. Uh, we may have sort of an indication for the legislature about what they're... Th Did I say... <laughs> oh, Okay. I thought maybe they're signaling me they're about. Did I call him? Did I call him the governor? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's required. He's required to by law, but we've seen sort of how that crowd. He does follow the law. He does follow. Um, in that particular instance, I don't know. I don't know what I'm. I need to stop talking. So, um, I don't even know what any of that means. So, yeah. But as as it relates, so finances will be a critical part of this conversation. So I think what we talked about is the second meeting in January. Um, we'll come and just lay out sort of where district financial p picture is and what that means relative to sort of where the governor has started, and we may have an indication for the legislature kind of where they're at as well by that point. Um, and then just talk about what the implications are for that. And, and I don't know necessarily what that is right now, but I know that's a, a, a point of interest. So that one's a little more. Any, okay. any comments on that? I, okay. I think everybody sort of recognizes that's the big elephant in the room this year <laughs> right. is what will we get for finances? Uh -huh. So, all right. Uh, and then the, the next one there is the facilities conversation. And so this one is actually... Um, I think we're talking about a board work session, the second meeting in April-ish, and so we'll be sure to get all kinds of information together. There's actually a document, I think it's available on our website, uh, Shai went through and sort of um, gave feedback on each of the buildings and, and where they are in terms of um, yeah. how much investment we should consider continue to put into them, sort of their overall, if we added, uh, I think if the elementary it had to have, what if it also had a media center type space and something else? I'm not doing this well off the top of my head. But that document's available and it would give feedback on sort of where we are with our facilities. Uh, we'll also try to, to feather in what's happening with student enrollment. We should have information by RS, from RSP by that time. And then also talk about what's Highway 100 potentially do, what's happening mm -hmm. with growth in the district, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, in my mind from there, the board give direction on so with all that information together, what would you like to see done next? And so you can direct um, what you'd like to see done at that point. So I think that's uh, great to me. I mean, we, we've had some reports, we've had some long-term, but then it gets put on a shelf a little bit, and I think we need to make sure we keep it in front. It doesn't mean, doesn't really mean other than it's a, I'll take a look at. Let's take the study off the shelf. Let's see where it's at. Doesn't doesn't mean at this point that we would it would have any immediate effect. But I I think it's most appropriate that we we go back. We let the the enrollment study and the boundary and and that whole issue go way too long before addressing it. And uh, I think it's one that needs to stay fresh and, and in front of the board. So thank you for putting it there. Okay. Other comments? Any, any Anything else that uh, anybody would like to bring up or see in this document of our priorities for the superintendent with the superintendent? So this reasonably in line with sort of where you would see priority work for the Next several months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Work. Thank you, Dr. Muffy. We'll get to work. Administration and the teachers and everybody. So we're all in this together. Thank you.